Hello my YouTube friends, so we're back again for another go, um, second time round, got the whiskey, welcome to the kennel. Um, so tonight I'm going to discuss um, lock up kits, lock up clutches, torque converters, what a torque converter is, what a lock up is, why we have it, what it does and why you want to buy one, essentially. So we need to understand what a torque converter is. So. I'm going to keep it pretty simple, we don't need to get, it is relatively complicated if you want it to be complicated, but I'm not going to make it complicated for the, for the exercise we need to understand what it is. So we're going to grab a motor. Yeah. All right. I've got the fire on, it's quite cold, so I'm making some sacrifices here. hope you appreciate it. I'm going to start the motor up. It's relatively quiet, must be a Tesla. For all intents and purposes, this is your transmission. So we're going to put that there so we can notice that the, even though I've got this one plugged in, oh, ta -da, the air from the motor makes the input shaft the transmission turn. So let's just imagine the air's oil, right? There's a stator in the middle and it multiplies torque and stuff, but we don't need to understand about that. We just need to know what's going on. So we put it in gear, and that one stops turning because transmission's in gear. Wheels aren't turning. But we've still got this one running. We've still got oil being forced in there trying to make it turn. So consequently, that generates quite a bit of heat. The more load we have here, as in the higher the gear, whatever we're towing, etc., etc. You know, this is turning a little bit slower because of the load. It's still trying to turn it. It's creating a lot of heat. Okay, so we understand, I guess now, what's going on when the converter gets hot and why. Um, so it's cold, we're gonna turn that off. Get rid of it. Throw that over there. So, actually, maybe just bring that back. So a torque converter. It's a little bit more complex than that. This is generally what they call a fluid coupling, but it still works, same principle. A lock-up clutch is a clutch that basically joins these two fans together so they turn at once. Hence, when you put it in gear with the lock-up clutch on, if that happens for whatever reason, the engine will stall because this can't turn. Okay, doke. It's all trying to turn together. So that's what lock-up clutch. Lock-up clutch joins them both together and gives you a direct drive, just like a manual clutch in a car. Um, so that's the concept of a, lock, of a lock up clutch. All their transmissions, now the freaking dog wants to come in. All right, everybody, hang on. I'll be back. Tip. All right, so early transmissions didn't have a lock up clutch. Um, later stuff does generally from most four speeds onwards. Um, the idea is to give you that direct drive, which obviously stops generating heat and also will give you better fuel economy because there's no slippage in the converter. Um, we're going to get a little bit complicated. Um, really newer transmissions have what they call flex lockup, uh, which basically means that the converter, while it's on, it's not 100%. So there's slippage, you know what I mean? So it might be on 30%, 40%, 80%, 90%, whatever. Um, and it's ramped off and on. But generally speaking, the concept's the same. It's there for the same reasons, the same principles. Um, but, you know, more modern electronic control allows the manufacturer to turn it off and on um, under different circumstances. Um, yeah, so I think I've covered that pretty well, I think. Hopefully you all know what it is now, why it's there, what it understands. Now we know what lockup is, or what a lockup clutch is. We're all now aware that it's got nothing to do with gears. Doesn't make your transmission stay in gear, all right? That's a whole different scenario. It is a separate component altogether from the actual transmission. It is in front of the transmission, inside the torque converter. It has no effect on the actual gears of the transmission, whether it be a five speed, six speed, eight speed, whatever, okay? Um, it is a whole different independent component, just to make that clarification. 
history of lockups. So many, many years ago, back in the day when um, Rod and myself were uh, in the old place that we affectionately called the cave, which is still there and it's still a cave. Um, I don't even know what year it was. It would have been, God, have to be 20 years ago. Um, we delved into the idea. There was a lot of complaints about GQs with automatics in them that um, when they shifted from fourth back to third, lockup would come off. The engine reserve would go through the roof because lockup wouldn't work in third. So we thought, oh, we looked into it and we just made up a simple relay box, a little relay and some wires and a switch to turn the lockup on independently of the transmission so you could allow the lockup to stay on and people could drive it in third gear with lockup on when they're towing. Fantastic work, great. I'm sure we weren't the only people doing that, um, but I think we were the first people to um, mass produce it and market it in conjunction with the auto elect next door at the time. We worked the light out together. There was nothing difficult about it. It was just a relay and some wires, but it worked good. It's a 12 volt solenoid. Turn it on, lock up's on. Great. It would code, um, but it wouldn't have, have, that code would not appear as a light on the dash and it did not um, affect the way the transmission operated in any way, shape or form. You only know that it was a code if you went into the diagnostics and found it, because you know, GQ diagnostics were pretty primitive and they still are. Um, so yeah, that was great, it worked good. Then we sort of moved that from a GQ to an 80 series, four speed auto, same principle, did exactly the same thing, then to a 100 series. Um, GUs, same thing, all the four speed stuff, all worked all good, not a problem. Um, and then things that are a little bit more complex when the five speeds come out because they had um, more complex electrical circuits, more complex solenoid setups. Um, so we had to use more than one relay and a resistor so that it wouldn't code, um, which worked fine. And uh, we marketed them for many, many years. Um, and again, that was a very successful product, which moved into the current generations we've got now. So that was generation one. First generation, um, we moved that into Mitsubishi's, we moved it into a whole range of transmissions, ranges, five-speed ranges. Um, we use that concept and principle with many, many different transmissions vehicle combinations and it worked fine after a period of time but we did discover that we were starting to get some failure rates with solenoids particularly on late stuff that was because um, the later stuff has what's called a, a pulse width modulated solenoid which means the solenoid doesn't just come on okay it's modulated off and on very rapidly um, to ramp the pressure on and off um, that's the way the manufacturer designs it, works great. Um, the problem with that is if you give battery voltage or vehicle voltage to that solenoid all the time, constant 12, 13, 14 volts, wherever it is, um, because the solenoid is not oscillating off and on, it overheats and it will eventually fail. Um, some don't fail, some take forever to fail, some fail very quickly, but the reality is, the latest solenoid requires pulse width modulation voltage to maintain its longevity and reliability. So we went to um, our Gen 2 lockup kit, which basically is a loom with a resistor that's vehicle specific, like this, which basically plugs into our little module here which is a replacement for the uh, earlier gen 1 type relay block which was either a combination of one relay two relays or even three or four relays depending on what transmission it was um, this is just a little computer or processor whatever you want to call it I'm not an IT expert but it's just a box black box yeah we've got a black box that um, plugs into there and uh, it recognizes what car it is plugged into by the there's a little, um, I don't know, diode thing in there that tells this thing what loom it is. Um, and then it 
basically controls the output um, of the PWN signal to suit the vehicle that it is in. So we are mimicking the uh, signal that the manufacturer uses with this box so that we can maintain the integrity of the lockup solenoid. Therefore, you will not have lockup solenoid failure. This is the gizmo that does black magic. We have found that um, in the really later stuff that we're getting into now, they are even more complex than that. Um, and without going into great detail, we've got to look at doing um, even more complex electronics to not necessarily make it work, but to stop it coding. Because the, the vehicle, modern vehicles now are a lot more sophisticated and look at a lot more data on a lot more uh, regular basis. Um, and while we can test them for a number of hours, if not days, and not bring a fault, doesn't necessarily mean they won't fault later on. So we've, we are looking at moving forward even further. We have a new unit, which is our <coughs> plastic bag again our gen 3 model same scenario it's got a vehicle specific loom plug and play for all intensive purposes this is a lot more sophisticated than the gen 2 our gen 3 or nomad lockup as we like to call it um, is a fully sealed ip rated waterproof duff proof uh, module which is this little beauty here this unit plugs into the can of the vehicle and reads all the data now the can is basically a wire that joins all the computers in the car together that all the computers send information to and from each other um, and they can all read what each other's thinking and talking about so we plug into that so we can read it as well so this is like I said Bluetooth are you not you seriously not gonna get Hang on, dog. Oh. Right out. Where was I? Nomad lockup. I like this thing. So it's um, you download an app from the app store like you do in the modern world, because everybody needs an app. You can't have too many apps, can you? Here it is. So you download your app and it comes up like this. Nomad lockup. There you go. There it is. And then you can adjust, you know, however you want the lockup to work. But the beauty of this is you can um, just wire it in, set it up, and it'll just work as per the setting we have already set in the app. Or you can customize it to suit yourself. It's also got five different maps that you can select on your on your phone, tablet, whatever, um, and make it work however you want it to work um, within certain parameters, of course. Um, or you can just press the button on the dash and it'll just come on like the old one did. That's an option if you want it to do that. Otherwise, you can just plug it, you can wire it all in and set and forget it and it'll just work. Um, it's very, very good. It's awesome. I love it. Um, so you should get one if you've got a 200 series. Um, we are currently virtually finished the Hilux one. Um, it's not far off. So um, that should transition then into that same transmission in Prados and Isuzu's and um, the AC60 auto is in a lot of old cars. So yeah, that's where we're moving to next. And then we're also gonna transition this through to all the older Gen 2 stuff as well eventually. Um, so that's what we're working for. So this is the future product. Um, at the moment, we've still got the old one, but this is where we're heading and this is where everything will be eventually. Um, so yes, very excited about this. Very, very, very good product. Um, and there's nothing else in the market like it. And what is even more impressive is you do not need a remap to use one of these. Other places use a remap because they need to delete codes um, because their product will, will give a code. Okay, You do not need to get a remap to use one of our Nomad lockup kits. Or indeed, you do not need a remap to use one of our earlier Gen 2 kits. A remap is not required. Right, well that's um, that's me from the kennel tonight. Um, it's been a pleasure, as always. 
I feel a little bit more relaxed this time. I'm sure I waffled on heaps more than I had to. I hope I've brought some um, light in the explanation of what a lockup kit is and how it works and why we have it and a bit of the history as to how it's developed over the last 15 to 20 years or so um, from our perspective anyway um, it's been a pleasure um, I think I might even do this again in the shed so if you've got a topic that you'd like to address or you'd like to me, like me to address feel free to drop it in the comments below something I can rattle off and have a drink and put your mind at rest about some things possibly so anyway until then He's looking at you. Cheers.